Lenore, I think you've done a wonderful job in explaining how this all worked together. Certainly, I think it's been really challenging for Australian teachers to go from an achievement standard to a criteria sheet. And so what you've shown me is it's really important to bring in the content descriptors to help understand the detail and then think about, well, what would that look like in evidence? And actually go and look for it because I think what you've done is draw out what the evidence looked like. I could see some things that I hadn't thought of um, when I just read through the evidence list. Would you mind reflecting for me what benefit was it to you in this process to actually take the time to annotate? Well, the annotations for me really started um, clarifying my teaching and, and the different um, skills and knowledge that I had to teach my students, but also the differentiation um, for when I started teaching. Because you can see that as I started annotating, these thoughts came to my mind, which is why I was flicking over to the back of the sheet and putting down my teaching points. From just putting down what the evidence would look like, that seemed really clear. But it actually wasn't until I started this process because it made me think really deeply about the qualities that I was expecting and what different performance of the skill might look like. Because mm. I could see you could do this and that would inform after a student had done some assessment and that might inform that individual student's learning but what you're saying is that by doing this right at the start before you start teaching this might in fact direct your planning for the whole unit so it's moving the assessment to the front of the planning process. Well and truly it was informing my teaching um, and the various aspects of my teaching were coming from me really having to think deeply about this and I was when I was annotating this I was trying to move beyond just the surface features and look at what that quality would look like so how could I instruct students about making the flow happen in their writing and getting depth of information and what were the specific things I needed to teach to have those sorts of skills occurring you did this by yourself because you worked hard on the weekend to do it and I didn't, I wasn't part of this, all of this thinking. Um, just remembering back to when we got our teachers to do it, we set them the challenge, they were working as a group. Do you think, would it be beneficial if a team of teachers were going to do it for people to do this individually then come together or do you think really they should do this meaning making together? I guess it is a personal personal preference. I like working in teams. I like um, being able to look at what was evidence and say, well, I, I think that is evidence for this reason. Um, I think that the conversations help you clarify your thinking. I had to, I was moving in between websites, looking at facts and details and just going between a lot of resources I think it would have been so much easier to have somebody else who was really looking after one resource and bringing those conversations together. Okay so maybe a facilitated conversation and maybe if we share what this looks like people could do that preparation and then have the conversation together mm. and I think I was also thinking about our beginning teachers and how beneficial this would be for them to look at before they started teaching. It would give them a really rich sense of, okay, this is what I'm aiming for and what it might look like. I can I see a lot of benefits. Mm. We'll see whether it really helps teachers and we'd like to hear from you. I guess we're sharing this video of practice just to give you some ideas, but the, the website is a place where you can share your good ideas because I think as teachers, we love learning from each other and saving time. So we're looking forward to hearing from you.